Ja, som I ser bag ved mig, der har vi de tre lamper, som Olof F. Eliasson har designet til operen. Selve glasset er tilnærmelsesvis det samme glas, som det, der bliver brugt til facaden til koncerthuset på Reykjavik. Så på den måde så kan man sige, at lamperne der har også været inspirationskilde til, hvordan vi kunne lave et anderledes hus. Og den diskussion, vi havde omkring størrelser og lys, var en af grundene til, at vi spurgte Olofor, om han også ville være med til at lave koncerthuset i Rækkevig. Det, det, det handler om, det er facaden og salene i, sådan et, i det her hus. Og så er det det mere immaterielle spil, der foregår i det der rum, der ligger imellem. At, at facaden vil kaste skygger og, og farver øh, ind på gulvet og, og balkonger. Så at en af hovedidéerne det er at sige, at facaden, du, du næsten i princippet, hvis det kunne lade sig gøre, så kunne du sænke facaden ned over huset. Der er stort set ikke nogen øh, berøringsflader. Men vi får forspørgelser over hele verden allerede nu. Der spørger, hvad, hvad er det, der er i gang i? Og og man kan så også sige, altså, at det er exceptionelt, det der har foregået i forhold til for eksempel vores samarbejde med Ellerve. At jeg tror aldrig, at der har været i historisk findelse projekt, der har integreret kunst og arkitektur. And it has been the process pretty much like doing a painting. This, like this glass has uh, the complementary color. So when you have yellow, you also have purple. So this is a yellow uh, glass. It's yellow in the transmission, but it is purple uh, in, the, in the reflection. You have to see this is a giant facade. So the amount of uh, color, um, when there's quite a distance, there can be a whole bus between this one and this one, just so you get a sense of the kind of the scale of things. There is a principle which is worth mentioning. That is when you have the colored glass, which as a tendency will stand out, I have typically put in a, a, a kind of a low reflexive next to it in order to give you a sense of it being a volume. The north facade, we have taken the south facade and simply cut it with a knife on an ankle, and this is then what, is, what it looks like. I have made sure that I, I have a, a, a story, an organic story, which I think still communicates it. We have chosen a place with, it, with the most impossible corner on the whole building, which is this one here. The challenge has been to solve how these two east and north facade meets because they don't have anything to do with each other besides being based on the same concept, but geometrically. So we have drawn every single corner uh, by hand and every single joint is, is uh, uniquely made. One of the things that we're concerned about, when you have a, a project that sits on a site that's very close to traffic, there's a lot of, um, of sound energy that either comes directly through the air or through the ground. In terms of the facade, one of our big concerns is making sure that that outer facade helps block some of the noise. Uh, because otherwise, the danger is that you have noise from the street passes through the facade and into the concert hall. There's a really complex solution to making sure that that works for acoustic reasons. It works for them aesthetically. Of course, there's also climate and weather issues. Uh, when you, we have the extreme climate in some ways that Reykjavik presents in terms of rain that blows sideways. <laughs> We've had long conversations with, uh, with IAV about uh, uh, constructability and, and weatherproofing. Um, so it's it's been a it's been a complicated process, but I think we're all satisfied that it's going to be it's going to be a good 
finished product. 